Checking out the Opie and Anthony program live from Washington, D.C. at the XM Compound. Anthony, I had to run back in here yeah. with food in my mouth. Me too. From eating outside. Yep. Yeah, this I little, run in. There's a little controversy going on right now. Um, they don't want us. Um, they don't want us eating in studio. Mm. So, um, so we're not. So we're not. Hold no. on, let me run out and get a mouthful. There we are. Mm mm. I don't. If we, we eat in here, the terrorists win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just amazing the priorities around here. It just amazes me. Yeah. It's like, who cares if the show sounds good or bad? Just make sure they don't eat in the studio. Might well, get mice in here. So if we eat, food falls down. And then before you know it, you got a mouse problem. It's like Opie's apartment. So obviously we're not rule breakers, so... um. We're not going to eat in studio. Mm. Hell of a spread, though. I tell you one thing. Ran down the hall. I'm like, Jesus, four bagels. Woo! <laughs> and a little fruit plate. It was four bagels and a fruit plate. <laughs> Hell of a spread. Now, logically, someone's got to explain to me how we're supposed to eat and do a radio show. Mm-hmm. See, we don't really break. No. We do four hours of basic talk with, like, maybe a, a, a segment where it's three minutes where we could literally run across the hall, take a leak, come back, throw our headphones on, and get back on the radio. Pretty much it. So if someone wants to try to uh, explain to me how we could get food in us and do a radio show, I'm willing to listen. IV? Some uh, kind of IV? Uh, maybe in the middle of the show we just take a 30-minute you know, break. They could snake a tube down our nose and into our stomach and feed us that way. The food is uh, 100 yards down the hall in some kitchen area, and they're like, hurry up and go eat because they don't want food in the studio. No. How is that supposed to happen? I have no idea. Plus, you know, uh, whatever. I mean, everyone knows I have to eat really early, mm -hmm. or I'll I'll pass out. I will pass out. Anthony could, Anthony could survive all day with maybe maybe just uh, a bagel and a banana. That's it. Yeah. I start eating when I get up at four in the morning and just co you know continually oh, just to eat through the entire day. Yeah, I just keep grazing all morning long, and uh, I was under the understanding. Uh, st Excuse me, I got a little... <laughs> uh, I, you, you, you shouldn't be eating. I know. I thought there was going to be food as soon as we got here. And Ben's like, no, the food will arrive at 6.15. I'm like, are you insane? You know I'll be passed out before then, right? So so we have to eat in studio and mm -hmm. do the radio show. I normally can't eat before the show because I'm in the middle of my jumping jacks regiment. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> can't you just do one jumping jack? I, we, we just want to see your form. Ben's, Look at Ben's doing jumping jacks. There you jacks. go. You could maybe uh, lead us all in a, a round of jumping jacks. No, we call them calisthenics. <laughs> calisthenics. Oh, calisthenics. <laughs> Jack LaLanne over here. <laughs> Jesus. I want to see your workout outfit. Is that is it that thing with the you know the one piece with the thing? Yeah, it looks like a 1920s bathing suit. Like <laughs> yeah. it straps over my shoulders and then goes all the way down to mid thigh. <laughs> well, it's, leotard. it's all yeah, leotard. singlet. It's all stripes. Finish up your exercise with a lucky, <laughs> lucky strike cigarettes. Kind of a, grow one of those weird, like, mustaches. A handlebar mustache. <laughs> handlebar mustache. Hey, Ben, can you grab a napkin? I dropped cream cheese all over the console. <laughs> oh, it's, it's gotten the little buttons, too. Gotta get a Q-tip. I got cream cheese in the controls. <laughs> what do you think? We eat with our feet like chimps? We know how to eat bagels. Stop throwing the food around in there. Do you lift the weights with the big balls at the end, the big black bar? 500. Yeah. 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 Not each one. <laughs> Lift it up. Yeah, they couldn't. <laughs> took a while to figure all that out, huh? What? Well, get rid of the big, you know, weighted balls on the end of the the thing. Make them able. Make them it able so you can you can change the weight on the ends mm -hmm. instead of just having the big balls at the end. Fifty pound weights. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, uh, we got to move on with the program. Ben wants us to promote what? That we're going to be in New Orleans next Monday and Tuesday. We're going to change our broadcast, too, by the way. On the road again. Because you can't see boobs at uh, 6 in the morning on uh, Bourbon Street. You can't drink that hour, either. So we're going to be doing uh, our show from 3 to 6 p.m. from New Orleans. Eastern. It, that's Eastern time? Yeah. All right, 3 to 6 uh, Eastern time from New Orleans next Monday and Tuesday. We're going to be live from the Crazy Horse Cabaret. That's 226 Bourbon Street. Back to afternoons, huh? <laughs> yeah, for a couple days. Yeah, How are you going to go back to doing mornings after that? I don't know. We'll figure it out. That's you noon know to three on the West Coast. Oh, thank Ooh. you. Thank you, Jimmy, for that. So, uh, yeah, we'll do a three-whole-hour broadcast. Tom. Tom, with, with, hey, we're going to be drinking the Hurricanes again, boy. With Tom from New Orleans. 
So that will be a lot of fun. Should we get Andy in here? Yeah. All right. One of our uh, favorite people. We haven't seen him in a while. Because mm. well, this guy's a freak. He really yeah. is. He doesn't like leaving his apartment. He's uh, who does? He's uh, he's 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 uh, he's got some paranoia in his head. I believe. Yeah. It's Andy Gore. Everyone. Here he is. He's got a little pizza box full of goodies. I guess. Hi, Eddie. Welcome to the Chocolate City. How you been? Good, good. And you? Very well. Good. We uh, had a fun experience just getting to the XM compound this morning. We got to see a shooting. Oh, really? We don't. We. I, I guess there wasn't any bullets actually fired, but they were. They were in position. They were getting ready for yeah. something. I don't know what they were answering, you know, but uh, they had their guns out. Dogs. They were all hiding behind, uh, like taking uh, boxes and uh, and meters, and mm. and they were pointing their guns all at one target. Maybe we'll read about it. That would be cool if we read. No, nah, yeah. they, they they don't report the crime in the in the ghettos. No, no, just uh, the important stuff that happens in the nice areas. Yeah, yeah. If that's all you hear about, th if there's a crime going down in a white neighborhood, that will be on the news. Hmm. This crime crap happens all the time in the ghettos. The ghetto. What year are you living <laughs> in the ghetto? The ghetto. I don't know. I was listening to Elvis Presley on the way in. <laughs> the in the ghetto. ghetto. I live in the ghetto. All right, so Andy, what's what's you been up to, man? Oh, I've just been doing the same shit, different yeah. day, <laughs> same same crap, different day. Yeah, just yeah. living in my own little world. Making the uh, collection grow, any or? Oh yeah, the collection's growing. Yeah, yeah, it's uh some new additions maybe that new, we haven't uh... new additions. Like, I've been working a lot on them. I'm working on like four websites. Oh really? Yeah. So my OCD is killing me, dude. Got like eighty <laughs> things going on at once. Yeah, he's got the OCD bad. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. We've, we've discussed that in the past. Really? Yeah. Do you have rituals you have to go through? Oh yeah, it took me forever just to you know go through doorways and redoing stuff. And, really? Oh, it's crazy. What do you have to do? I got to. I don't know. The like go in and out of doorways. Yeah, it, it it has to feel right. It's it sounds fucking crazy, but I was like in this government study as a kid, and I like kind of pioneered this OCD drug that you can get at like uh, drugstores and stuff now. Really? Yeah, it was crazy, because I was uh, I think I was sixteen, and I couldn't move from one end of the room to to the uh, uh, other so, really yeah, they stuck me in the nut ward holy dude geez. he was fucking it was a great experience though i look back at there now it's like you know i was in uh, mclean hospital in boston and that's where uh what's that uh a brilliant mind guy was in oh, oh beautiful mind oh, yeah 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 the yeah. uh the, uh, the, uh, yeah. the professor john nash right yeah and, uh, so that was fucking crazy dude Jeez, what did they do? They 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 experimented on you with drugs? Well, they didn't know what the fuck to make of me because I wasn't like schizophrenic and psychotic and I could handle myself and they were just like Yeah, but why what was the main problem that got you into the hospital? I mean, you couldn't go through doorways. I couldn't though. I washed my hands so much it was just like two scabs. I mean, it was just wow. obsessive washing and it got to a point where I would like put Windex in my eyes. Really? Yeah, it was fucking crazy. Why Windex? Why? I had to clean them. <laughs> you had to clean them, of and, course. And, and, you, um, you, and you're no doing streets. this, and you and you know what you're doing is absolutely insane. But it's just, it, you know it's like just compulsion to do you it. You had to do it. You had to do and it. And what what would happen if you didn't do some of these rituals that you had to do to get from one room to another? What would happen if you just said, "Look, I'm just walking through this door. I don't care." I wouldn't feel comfortable. When we all go through times where we don't feel comfortable. I mean, I w I'd feel, I'd always be thinking of the doorway. I'd really? Always be, it's crazy. It's an insane wow. illness. Yeah. That is crazy. Jesus. How the hell do you function? How long does Windex burn in your eyes? Uh, it, 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 about 15 seconds or so. <laughs> yeah, then you, you just cheer up and you cry out. And you then just, you see really nice and clear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no yeah, streaks. Really. No streaks. Wow, yeah. that is nuts. Yeah, it was back in the day. Yeah, but you so you're not you're not that crazy now, but oh, you no. still have these compulsions that make you do things? Yeah. And what what is that? What kind of ritual do you have to get from one room to another? What It all varies on what's going on, what day it is. Is it like a counting thing sometimes? No, I I not no no counting. No counting, just uh repetitive stuff. Yeah. Stuff over and over again. So you got like walk in and out of the doorway a few oh, times? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no set number of times, just till it no, feels right. Just till it feels right. 
What about the the door itself? Does it have to be positioned properly? I know some people that no, like that. No, I mean, it, my OCD is really weird because it's never been really pegged down. It's kind yeah. of all over the map. But I've made my life so I work alone, I live alone, mm -hmm. just so I can kind of do my own thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I'm a pain in the ass to work for. If you're kooky in your own place and you're by yourself, then, you know, it's fine, because you're only kooky with yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't care. It's like, I, c right. I came out of the OCD closet on you, the show. Right, right. On, oh, and right, show. right. Wow. That's wild. Now, I guess being alone in your in your uh, apartment or house, uh, uh, that, that gives you the opportunity to kind of uh, get this collection and the, the, this hobby you have together. Yeah, I um, have one of the largest collections of uh, freak and sideshow circus memorabilia in North America. Yeah, some creepy stuff. Some very creepy stuff. And you have relationships with some of these uh, killers that are in prison? Yep. As far as and writing And some that are out of prison as well. Really? Yeah. Who's uh, out that... Uh... Uh, this, the Vampire of Paris, his name is Nico Klaus. This and guy is a fr listen to this story. I remember this guy. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, nah, he's a but he uh, was a cannibal and uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. But they just put him in a nut in a nut ward. And he's a, he's out about now. They let him out. Yeah, he's yeah. out now. He's doing art full time. What kind of uh, what murders did he commit? Yeah, he yeah just he just killed like some gay dude, but he would work at, at morgues and like dr steal blood. Uh, really? Bags of blood, yeah. He was and drink them? And drink them, yeah. Oh, vampire crazy. How long was he yeah. in jail for? I think about four years. Four? Yeah, four. That's, oh, that's good. It? It's all better. That's good. <laughs> yeah, and I mean... and That's good. One, one day I sat down, you know, at the computer, and I get an email from Nico Klaus, and I was like, what the hell, you know, how can you email me from jail? And, you know, he was like, oh, I'm out of jail now, and he goes... Send me some of your T-shirts, the you know, really extreme ones, and goes, and I'll uh, model for you. Oh, jeez, yeah, fucking crazy! Wow, where does he uh, where does he live? He's in France. Oh, that's kind of safe. Yeah. Kinda. Didn't he like cook up stuff too? Uh, Nico, nah. Nico wasn't the guy nah, that was, was cooking up some. Eats stew. it raw. Well, how'd they know he was all better? Like the one day in therapy, they said. Uh, you know, you shouldn't drink blood, and he went, ah, you're right, I shouldn't. And they I just don't know. Said, ah, okay, let him out. He's fine. Yes. Mm. He worked it to his advantage, I have no idea. I mean, he had a website up there right after he got out called The Vampire of Paris that was really graphic and really glorifying his crimes. And um, and he, that website's taken down. So I, I don't know if they told him to take it down or if he got any, any heat. Wow, this guy will do something again, that's for sure. But he's all up for an interview. Yeah? I, I asked him, you know, if you guys ever want him yeah, on. Yeah, we'll talk oh, to him. We'll talk to I him. He's speaking English? Yeah, he speaks English. Yeah. yeah? See what he's all about. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, it'd be great. And what other uh, parts of the serial killer, like, collections do you have? God, I have, uh... Uh, let me see. I have Charles Manson's hair. I got a bunch of little letters, artwork from everybody from John Gacy to. You do uh, have a Gacy. Oh yeah, I got a bunch of Gacy. Really? I just bought a whole crime lot. It'll blow your your mind. It's uh, it, everything from Richard Speck Ooh. stuff, um, to uh, what else is in there? Like a bunch of original wanted posters for the Night Stalker, uh, Otis Tool stuff. Oof. And he he's the guy that uh, killed that America's Most Wanted. Adam Walsh, yeah. Yeah, Adam Walsh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. So he recanted his confession, right? Like, he said he did it, and then he gave a confession, a, a, a blow by blow, which I read. It's the most disturbing thing I've ever yeah. read. And then he took it back and said, no, I didn't do that. Yeah, he, he ended up dying of AIDS. In, oh, he did? Uh, in prison, yeah. But I wrote Otis when he was still alive. And, and he wrote back, you know. You know, like crayon. Hello, my new friend. Oh, <laughs> and he and he sent me these drawings of like uh, people with axes in their head and stuff. And it was just crazy. And he'd sign them all. Otis Tool. Wow. Yeah. So I got a bunch of that stuff. I'm going to be selling off a lot of it though. Are you? Yeah. Will you just throw it on eBay or something? Nah, I got. Yeah. How do you sell something? <laughs> yeah, like that? How do you sell that? The problem with eBay is. I got banned from there. Do you say, <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to get banned from uh, eBay? I got banned from eBay. Uh, well, what happened was a few years ago, there was a district attorney in Texas 
that uh, got a wild hair up his ass about murderabilia stuff that murderabilia mur yeah he coined the the, the, the phrase it's catchy yeah it is it's cute and um so he wanted my head on a goddamn steak just because the stuff i did was so uh, you know the products that i make right he's so, profiting from yeah, someone profiting uh, and you know blah 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 so he ended up uh, getting his whole campaign going and got a uh, the whole murderabilia auctions shut off of eBay. They still sell Nazi memorabilia, don't they? <laughs> yeah, but it has to be from the era. Yeah, yeah, but still, that's what's the difference? I, I selling Nazi memorabilia, even if it's from the era, it's like uh, it has you to know, be over fifty years old. They said. So if you got something from a serial killer fifty years old. I guess you'd be you able to get put away. It on eBay? Oh yeah, I'm sure. I've seen Bonnie and Clyde stuff up there. Right. I've seen Clyde Barrow's uh, saxophone. Really? Yeah, but that. You know, but the opening bid was like twenty five thousand. Yeah, that's a biggie. That's a biggie. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's any, cool stuff to have though. Any Edmund Kemper stuff? Yes, it rings a bell. Yeah, I have so much stuff. Like the co-ed killer in California. He's just like a six foot nine serial killer. He's like really a brilliant guy. And he's like the one. He's like my favorite. Your favorite? Why is he your favorite? Give his trading card. I would love to, just because he's 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 a psychopath. I mean, he is a mer he's in jail for life, but he's a really bright guy, and I've read enough about him to know that yeah. he's really in tune with what he did. He's the one that um, he decapitated his mother, and then he violated her body. And uh, one time, he came home with a, a, a severed head and a bowling bag, and he sat down and had dinner with his mom. And then his final crime wow. was he, he murdered his mother. He murdered his mother. He did something awful to her body, and then invited her best friend over to say it was a birthday party. And then he killed the best friend too, and then turned himself in. Wow. Yeah, Edmund was a naughty that boy. That is nasty. Yeah, he was a naughty boy. Yeah, I, I, I have a big fondness for Ramirez. Richard, yeah. Yeah, nice Richard, teeth. yeah. He's great. Well, you, they're all fixed now. I got them, you know. Did you get them fixed in jail? Yeah, they fixed them. What? R nice doctor had bad teeth. Oh, they fixed his teeth? Yeah, so we got, nice. you know, free dental care now. Yeah, so. hey, that's beautiful. But yeah, I, you know, I like Richard a lot. He, Why do you like him? Yeah. Because he stays true to his beliefs. He's not like, oh, I found God. He's just like, nah, I'm an evil motherfucker. He's still, if they let him out tomorrow, would oh, just yeah. take up where he left oh, off. Oh, yeah, he called. I got a phone call from him. <laughs> oh, my God. It, it, it was a three-way call from, this was a few years back. Uh, it was from his wife, and it was like a three-way. And he's like, Andy. He's like, how are you doing? You're a madman. You're a madman, he's saying. <laughs> yeah, I know, and I'm just like, you know, oh. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I used to deal his artwork a lot. He'd like draw stuff and send it to me. And uh, he'd, he'd make all this glorification Night Stalker merchandise and send him photographs of it. He's really proud of the, yeah, the oh, whole Night Stalker oh, he's thing. He's real proud of it, yeah. yeah. yeah he's, wow. Uh, he's definitely, you know... Is stay true to his beliefs. You got any of the biggies? You know, I know you said you got John Wayne Casey, but like Jeffrey Dahmer. I don't have any Dahmer stuff, no? unfortunately. No, probably I mean, hard to come by. I got a bunch of crime team photos that weren't released. Yeah, you know, but I didn't get most of that stuff on the net. What about Bundy? I got yes. I just got a when he was acting as his own lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a, a court document that he typed and signed. The Robert Bundy. We had some that's nice a piece good one with a. With a Court receipt stapled on it. Yeah, it's good. Stuff. That's a nice one. Yeah. Now, what about this guy in uh, Connecticut that they're um, ready to put to death? What the hell's his name? Oh, the guy that requested the death penalty yeah, and they he stopped requests it. Requests the death penalty. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, serial killer from uh, um, like the 1980s, and um, then his lawyer, who is a against the death penalty. This guy wants to die. His lawyer, who's against the death penalty, is doing everything he can to keep the guy from being killed. The guy's just like. I want to end this. Yeah, you know, it. I want to end the misery of the victims' families and stuff. Just put me to death. And this scumbag lawyer comes out and uh, stops the execution. Bastards. Nothing from him, though, right? No, nothing. That pussy. What do you got from John Wayne guy. Gacy? Do you got one of his uh, paintings or drawings or whatever? Oh, I got a bunch, yeah. I got a bunch of his... Uh, Clown? Uh, I, I, I have uh, two clowns, <laughs> and I have... Uh, some pen and ink drawings that are they're, uh, they're very crude, but I have like portraits of Ted Bundy drawn by John Wayne Gacy. Wow! And Dahmer and Manson. I mean, I got you know about this whole crime lot of stuff. That's pretty cool. But that guy was a businessman, you know. He was making bank when he was in jail. Sure. Gacy was with his paintings, and uh, I have a I don't know if you know who Gigi Allen is. Sure, of yeah, course. Yeah, but I have a portrait of Gigi done by Gacy. Gigi was insane, uh, man. Gigi was the real deal. Guy was like a hardcore punk. 
oh. uh, singer uh, with the what was his band's name? The, the Murder, Murder, Murder Junkies. Yeah. yeah, and he would get up there and just he'd take a banana, shove it up his ass uh, without the peel on it, crap it out into his hand. And throw it into the audience. <laughs> yeah, he was really gifted. <laughs> <laughs> He'd just vomit on people. And, and it was always fighting. He changed the whole generation. <laughs> yeah. Just like the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Beatles and then it was Gigi Allen. No, but he was Gigi. actually making a statement. And the statement was, I'm an ass. <laughs> <laughs> Creep. Yeah, um. yeah th there was a video made of him taking a uh, squirty bottle of ketchup and squirting it up some girl's ass. And she shit it out on the... Uh, a, f a plate of French fries, and he would eat it. Of course he would. Yeah, it's just he would do anything, you know. Jeez. Uh, anything. Fuck dead animals on stage. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, it's I mean, just he, crazy. You never on knew stage. what you were gonna get with Gigi. Was the music good? Does, no. Oh, has anyone ever awful. reviewed the music over the years? Uh, yeah. Because I, I know he's known for his antics, but I his mean, his antics. Yeah, I mean, the last record they did with the Murder Junkies was like surprisingly like, wow, this is fucking great, and. It, Gigi's brother is in uh, the Murder Junkies yeah, yeah, yeah. tour now. And huh. Oh, they're still around without Awful. him? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. They just got back together. And uh, I think the th lead singer of Anti-Scene is singing. What was the name of that Gigi Allen documentary? I saw that. that Hated. Was, yeah, that's a great film to Definitely check out. Definitely catch that. Yeah. It's 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 very interesting. My friend wanted, knows him, actually. Uh, Merle, Al Merle Allen. Yeah, is Merle. Right? Um, he wanted to commit suicide on Halloween or something in yeah. front of a live audience, and uh, he couldn't get it done. In 1992, I think, he, he was <clears throat> said he was going to kill himself on stage, and he ended up being in, you know, he was uh, incarcerated at the time. And then the next Halloween, he was actually supposed to doing uh, do a show at the 9:30 Club here in D.C. And uh, they asked me to be the host of the show. And this is fucking great. And um, he ended up not showing up because his parole officer said he couldn't leave. So, mm. well, no you, Gigi. Let me ask a question. He was going to go kill himself, but his parole officer said no, and he said, "No, no, no I better not. I better not. I don't want to get in trouble." <laughs> he, he couldn't leave the state. Yeah. Yeah, there's a sincere uh, desire to kill yourself. I, I'd love yeah. to shoot myself, but I'd hate to get yelled at after. Yeah, it just it sucked how Gigi died over an overdose. It's like, man, I wanted to see, you know. Yeah, he went uh, in a boring fashion. Yeah, yeah. but it's rock star Because he kept talking yeah. about how he was going to do it in front of everybody. He yeah. just hated himself and wanted to end it. That's that's cool. Well, did when you you're throwing your own feces at the crowd in front of you on stage, yeah, that, you got to really think that over at night when maybe yeah. you're ready to go to sleep. So when you were a kid, you dream of being Paul McCartney, you know. Or as a comic, I'd love to one time just take a handful of logs and throw them at the audience for groaning at a mean joke. <laughs> but like when you realize that's your whole yeah. gig, you're right. It's got to be time when you're yeah. laying there going, you know, this is just not the way it was meant to be. I kind of I wanted to just contribute. Blow my something. brains out on stage and end it. And there's been so many GG imitators popping up too all over the Has place. there? Yeah. But like Gigi's the king, he's the Elvis of shit eating, you know. <laughs> the Elvis. You know? <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That's how you plug those shows. Yeah, yeah. He has a following to this day that's almost cultish. Yeah. Yeah, especially in Europe. Well, that figures yeah. too. So it's it's David Hasselhoff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've seen him throw feces at the uh, crowd too, David Hasselhoff. Yeah, it's called every show he ever did. <laughs> <laughs> Stands up on his Knight Rider car and starts singing. You ever see clips of David Hasselhoff in Europe? I've, no, not at all. It, it is, it's hysterical. It, he still, to this day, he drives out on stage in a kit car with the little red light in front, stands up on it, and sings, I'm a Night Rocker. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's huge over there, too, isn't he? Oh, yeah. of course he yeah, is. Yeah, that's fucking You crazy. just want him to jump off the hood and have Kit just run him over <laughs> multiple times. <laughs> I'm sick of this, Michael. <laughs> Your songs suck. <laughs> the, the, the other thing I want to bring up with Andy is uh, his pickled punk collection. Oh, right. Or pickled punks. Actually, um... Collection. Yeah. Actually, saw one of those. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, um... When we broadcasted live from uh, JFK a few years back, you know, he gave us all the invite to go check out his pad, which is just uh, pretty disturbing, actually. <laughs> it is just packed with all sorts of just crazy Ooh. crap. Some real cool stuff, like the Kiss Pinball Machine, I remember, or yeah, something like yeah. that, and, and all sorts of stuff. But then he has this, like, back room area mm. with fish tanks. That are all kind of covered up with like uh, uh -oh. black velvet. With black velvet, and one by one, he uh, he he has it all. I mean, he's an OCD freak, so he has it all set up because he knows he's going to show people. Right. So it's, it starts off 
quote, sort of tame, considering, you know, it's pickled punks, obviously, and then ends with just deeply disturbing stuff at the last tank, mm-hmm. and slowly but surely, one after another, he lifts up the black velvet. Opie, you saw stuff that nobody sees. These are like old... You got the, uh... Yeah, you got to explain what how pickle, old are these? pickle punks are. These are from the old side these shows. From, from, they were... A pickle punk was a carnival term for a freak fetus in formaldehyde that they would tour with. And you'd, Pickle punk. And you'd pay your dollar and get to go see, you know, Ronnie and Donnie, the two-headed baby. Right. And now mo- They would name these things? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah they, 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 they all they, had great names. What was the Lion Boy or something? Like the Lion Boy, the, uh, Yvonne the Waterhead Girl. Oh, God. Um, Yvonne. The Cyclops <laughs> Elephant Girl. There was no name on her. But. Benny the Big Bulge Baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was big business. It was big business back in the day. Yeah. And then people pay to, to people see this thing. People pay to see it, and uh, I'm sure people would still pay to see it, too. But Of course they would. Uh, yeah, we all like a freak show. It, it's very interesting because they're in these old old jars some of them and and some he uh, he threw into the uh the fish tanks but uh the old jars have like these real massive uh, uh locks and chains and stuff because i guess people yeah. would steal these things back really because the they yeah i mean they would bring in a lot of money yeah that so mean, they would have them chained down so no one could steal them so it's really interesting to see these old locks and chains from because some of these things are over 100 years old oh, right? they're, yeah they're ancient yeah i mean they've toured all over the world and uh mm. They were from Captain Harvey Boswell. He had the largest pickled punk show touring in America in back, really? in, back in the day. So over the years, he's collected these damn things. Yeah. When did he die? Or is he still alive? Boswell died about, I would say, four years ago. But he was a carny up until the day he died. You know, he was, uh, would milk milk people for like, oh, I'm going to be selling them. You know, send me 20 bucks, and I'll send you a catalog, and you just pocket the 20, you know. You ever see a pickled punk called... Uh, Connor, the uh, Lil Fisherman. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I I went to his pad and and saw the pickled punks uh, displays and uh, yeah, deeply disturbing. Especially uh, was it? I'm trying to remember. Was it Siamese twins? Yeah, and in, in the fish tank with uh, little diapers on. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, that's twisted. Yeah, they, they were that cold. one almost made me puke. But these things are still pristine, and some of them, like he was saying, are over a hundred years old, and they still look like they, you know, someone threw. Oh, this you in see a... the little hairs on them, oh, little my, fingernails. Like, like the Lion Boy one, I remember had a weird like mane or something. Yeah, he had his head sort of grow, was like growing out of his back. Oh, so he kind of looked like he, like he, was, like like, he stood up yeah. like an animal, like a lion? Yeah. Oh, that is really sick. You just bend your head all the way back, and that's how that's Ooh. how he was normally. And then the hair kind of looked like it was on his back and his head at the same time. They called him Lion Boy. <laughs> and, but uh, then you get to the end. That was the grand finale, the Siamese Twins and the Diapers, right? Yeah. Yeah. When I saw that, I'm like, oh, my God, time to go. i got to get out of here. They I was put, really... It, it, they put it in diapers? But what happened? Yeah. He, he gets off, you know, seeing your reaction when you see this of stuff. Oh, I... What happened with Lion Boy? They said, like, uh, did you sleep with a girl? And he said yes, but her name was uh, Julie, and it's been about a year. Is that what happened with Lion Boy? <laughs> <laughs> Not lying. Oh, oh, oh Lion. Oh. Lion. L-I-O-N, you ass. <laughs> so, yeah, the Pickled Punks was quite uh, disturbing to see, yes. Now, now, wait a minute. The diapers that are on this. Oh, they were being, uh, Boswell had a show in Canada. <clears throat> uh, he was a real racist guy. And he was like, oh. Boswell? Boswell, yeah. And he was like, oh, the niggers are fucking everything up in America, so I'm going to just go to Canada and show these things off. And uh, the Siamese twins had very big genitals, and Ooh. they got complaints the, the people who own the camp or the showground got complaints. Got complaints not because there was a right. fetus, fetus in a, in a jar. Because in a jar or a fish big. tank is because the junk of yeah. the fetus in the fish tank was too big. Probably a bunch of Asians all jealous that the fetus had yeah, bigger ones. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of Asians in Canada, so not too far fetched there, Jimmy. How long ago was this? This Boswell guy. Yeah, this was in the sixties. In the sixties? Yeah. And they said he either cover up the genitals or, or take them on take them off display. So he put little cloth diapers, and they, <laughs> they remain to this day. Now, now wait a minute. So he had to then open oh, up the container. Dude, I'm going there. I know what you're going to say, but go ahead. And and take put little diapers on these. Yeah, little cloth diapers. And put them back in the jar. Uh huh. Fill it up with formaldehyde and 
seal it up again. Yeah. Our own Andy Gore does the exact same thing. Every once in a while, he has to clean out his fish tanks. No way. Oh, he explained yeah. it to me. Wait, wait. The jars? It isn't jars in a fish tank? Well, there's... Well, you, well I have some in jars, some in yeah, fish yeah. tanks. And some just floating in the fish tank, you oh, mean? Yeah. Yeah, well, the twins are in the fish tank. <laughs> Dude. Dude, it's fucked. If wait, you, yeah, that you, is. You could curse. If, if you get, if you ever get the chance, I'm telling you, because I think we're going to be doing this Washington on a, a, kind of a regular basis, once a month or something like that. One of these trips, go to his apartment. You have to go. It's That's better creepy. Than, it's better than any museum you'll ever go no, to. No, I can't even watch like commercials for The Grudge or The Ring anymore. I, I, it'd freak me out to go there. I'd have nightmares. Wait a minute. So do you have? Have you touched these things like skin to skin? I've never touched them. What Why? do you wear? Glove. Huh? What yeah, do you wear, I wear gloves. gloves. So, yeah. but you have to lift them out. I would like. See, I've, I've never. Li I, there's one I, I call him Soupy, and he's. <laughs> Why do you call him Soupy? Because he's in this. Oh. I would say, foot and a half high jar yeah. with probably maybe three inches of formaldehyde, and he's lying on the side. And he was a frog baby, so he has like these big bulging eyes, and and he's rotted away, so his spine is completely exposed, oh. and he's just lying in like wonton soup. Egg. Oh, oh my god. So that god damn. Whole, uh, Can't you put more formaldehyde in there? Yeah, that yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, old, old soupy. Soupy. Oh. So Does he tell awful jokes? Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, the, the, let me tell you. Yeah, but the punks you Ooh. know. You can't show them anymore. And, no, uh, no. And, uh, Very illegal. Well, let me ask you a question. How long, like, what you'll do is you'll drain the fish tank and then there's an exposed punk. Why wouldn't you touch them with your hand? Is it creepy? I've never changed one yet because I've just, uh, I've just kind of left them as is because I need to be, uh, the formaldehyde it's in, it's really old. Yeah. And I need to talk to uh, somebody at a museum. Because how long would they be exposed for before, like, the air, if the air hits them, how long are they exposed for before there's a real problem? Oh, God. I couldn't tell you. Okay. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I'm not as funny if the skin started to rot off. Well, right. was, I'm sorry. Actually, with, with the freak punks came a crate of regular punks where they would have these things called life shows on the Carnival Midway where they would, uh, you'd pay your dollar and you'd get to see fetuses and all different stages of uh, development. Right. And then for the extra 50 cents, you can see a two-headed one. So, you know, it's, it's fetus o -rama. But mm -hmm. some... Ladies and gentlemen, children yeah, of all ages. Exactly. I have some that the formaldehyde has evaporated and they've actually mummified. Really? Yeah. How many you got? You have a lot, man. Oh, damn, 30-something. Wow. Yeah, he, he's yeah. The, it's the real deal, Does it man. creep you out to sleep there? That would creep me out. I've been trying yeah. to convince them to get some pictures up on a website or something because you got to see some of these. That would creep me out to be in the in, in there like sleeping. Dude, at he's night. got it all set up with crazy lighting. I remember, right? Uh, yeah, like, yeah, like purple and green light. I, I'm trying to remember. It's been a while, but he's got it. He set it up to just show you, you know, show it off, man. Yeah, yeah. It's not just oh yeah, look what I got in the back. To no, scare the hell it's all out set of up you. almost like probably how it was in the day, you know, because with the lighting and stuff, they can you can make these things even freakier looking. You yeah. Know? Oh, it's great, and I uh, it's got so much of that stuff, and I really want to open up a museum one day. Yeah. That's my next thing. I'm going to sell some stuff off. Well, the, yeah, what's the difference, by the way? Like, it's amazing what they judge is wrong. Like, what's the difference between what he's got and a museum? I mean, they show, they show like, they'll show mummies in a museum. Why is that acceptable? But mm -hmm. what you have is not acceptable. What's the difference? It's all in the presentation. Yeah, no one's, yeah. no you probably couldn't do a circus sideshow these days. I, actually, you can't do it <coughs> and have these things in there. But you could probably have a museum of circus sideshows right. where you present it exactly. as history as a museum of what used to happen and how awful it was right. and then you can show these exact exactly, same things yeah because <laughs> these aren't just stolen from some med school you know right. I, I bought off the web these are like uh you know uh, legitimate carny and how old carnival, are so. are the fetus like when were these fetuses taken like from from i don't know i mean i i, I couldn't tell you yeah, would, would you think it would be? But just by the jars, like I said, and the the old locks and stuff. I mean, you, you could tell these it looks things. like I got it was, some that are really old. You I could mean, tell these are real. Maybe old. even eighteen hundreds. No, I wouldn't say that. Early nineteen or early, early nineteen. Yeah. Because yeah. wow. the gentleman that started the pickle punk show, his name was Lou Defoe, and uh, he he was the one that made it popular. All right, really. really? Really fast, line two, Todd from New York. If we could go to Todd, he has a question for Andy Gore, who's in studio here in D.C. Hope hey. he can't take phone calls. No, I don't think so. We got him. Todd, what's up? No. No? 
Yeah. Todd, you're all, you're all the air. You're yeah. all the air with us. Yeah. What? Actually, yeah, they're in there. Hey. Ben is... Well, is hey, Todd, oh, we got there him. He is. What's up, Todd? <clears throat> hey, I got a human skull, a real one. I want to blow this thing out. My wife and kids are kind of freaked out. I've had it for years. And I want to sell it, but I don't know where the hell to sell the thing. Where'd you get it? It could be a crime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and where'd you no, get the skull it from? It came from a doctor's office. Uh, got, oh. It's an old doctor's office. The guy died, and his kid's mother did a clean out, and he had the skull there and sold it to me for like twenty bucks because I thought it was cool as hell. But my wife and kids don't appreciate it. Yeah, I, I've changed my mind on all this stuff. I used to think it was all cool. Remember mm. Chuck Farnham? Chuck yes. Farnham is a friend of ours. He would um, old friend. We haven't talked to him in a while. We're gonna get him on the new show. He would uh, somehow get uh, uh, bones mailed to him. Like yeah, yeah, human bones, human bones, called the cannibal wear. Yeah, and then he would make necklaces out of them. Like you see the middle knuckle of like your middle finger. Yeah, didn't you have a necklace? Yeah, yep. I did. And yeah, I, no, I buried yeah. it in my backyard. I, yeah. I finally got uh, so creeped out by it. I, I actually buried it in the backyard of the place I was living at. I was wearing the thing, and man, it's a conversation starter. People are like, wow, that's cool. And then you tell them what it is, and everyone's like, what is wrong with you, man? Mm. You know, I had a nice little necklace around my neck with this human bone. It was like the middle knuckle of your middle finger. Yeah. And, uh, Disturbing. I, and I finally said, you know what, this is just too creepy, and I ended up burying the thing. Yeah. You buried it? But the guy would uh, get uh, bones mailed to his, uh, his place, and then he would make necklaces out of them. I mean, you can get human bones in stores in New York City. I mean, legitimate really? stuff, yeah. There's my, like Maxilla Mandible, which is like a yeah. frou-frou well, museum how, place. So how do you sell a human skull? Um, very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe eBay. Yeah, eBay. Um, oh, what was the thing you got kicked off eBay for? I, mean, oh, oh, I know, that, but what was the actual item where they finally said, you know what, enough is enough of this oh, guy? Oh, it was uh, this, the DA who had this, you know, hair up his ass to, like, make everybody moral. Yeah. Um, ended up getting it all shut down, so it was just anything. Oh, just anything. And, yeah. Okay. Mm. Like, but uh, I have, a, like, all the articles he was in, he had all my stuff in People Magazine. And really? Saying how, like, I was worse than a pornographer and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it was like, you know, everything I do was take it with a grain of salt or yeah. a spoonful of salt. It's all done, you know. Humor, not hate. If you don't like it, fuck you, you know? All right, right on. Why don't we take a quick break? You brought a couple little things to show us today? Yeah, yeah. I had, kind of had a late notice, but I got something that I procrastinated on sending you for... Oh, uh, dude. Can I have this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you. And then... You remembered, man. Thank you. People Magazine with uh, Kurt Cobain on the cover. The the the, the issue that came out uh, when he died. Wow. wow. What year is that from? 94? Uh, of course, 94. April I don't remember what year he died. <laughs> April 25th, 1994. What year is that? 89, you idiot. <laughs> well, I didn't remember when he died. I don't know. I don't know that much about Cobain. Dude, you sure you're, you're going to give this to me? Are you kidding me? Yeah, when he died, I got a, I bought a bunch of them. Oh, right on, man. Thank you so much. That's cool. You should, you should uh, find a way to close it up and put it in a frame and hang it. Yeah, I would definitely hang that in my uh, my empty apartment. <laughs> I can't wait to come in one day. Just say yeah, the mouse chews on it. Maybe <laughs> make a little rat nest out of it, pull up piss and crap. All right, we'll take a quick break. We got Andy Gore in studio. We'll see what he brought in, and uh, we'll continue with uh, the program. Yes. Wow, what was that? Uh, that was probably one that of these. Oh, okay. Let me open the door. Ooh. Cut, print it, perfect. perfect. <laughs> Let's go to break. <laughs>